lucky enough to end up in Peace Ollie's Hotel, huh? Well, what's in your room? A, a twine mesh bed called the Charpoy. And a stand-up hookah. Stand-up hookah? You gotta stand up to smoke these monster hookahs. And you don't get a Bible in your room to get you through the night. You get a hookah that every traveler needs to get through the night. I mean, I've lived 27,000 days and nights. And hookahs have gotten me through a lot of those. You know. Well, look, the reputation <laughs> of Queen Latif has preceded her to Kandahar. So uh, Peace Ali is like, yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing, invites the queen to stay for fruit. According to Melmastia Patan Hospitality, where you, strangers are protected automatically, it's in their blood, it's in their DNA, it's in their chromosome, it's in their genomes. They just can't giddy up without being that protective. Free room. Well, he calls over her son, his room boy. Take her to our best room. That's the one with the hookahs, with the little circular mirrors uh, uh, embedded in the clay. And show her our hashish press out in the backyard. I want to make an impression here. We're talking about the queen of Chitral. And you know what they got? They got a sassin up there, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, consistent with this uh, way of being. Uh, the dwarf uh, of LSD and hashish guides the queen hand in hand. In this part of the world, men hold hands, okay? It's okay. It doesn't mean you're gay. Well, you could be. But yeah, the guys like to hold hands. Get used to it. It's fun. Palm off on each other. Two. Oh, that neighborhood hammam bathhouse. You've heard of Turkish baths? Well, there's Afghani bathhouses. All the Islamic cultures, they have bathhouses because individual homes, they don't have any running water, hot or cold. As spoiled bastards back in Western civilization. Um, yeah. Labyrinthine, steamy, ooh, misty. And this water, I mean, they got wood-burning hot water heaters. There's eight of them right in the middle of the bathhouse facing every direction. You just wait so it's not boiling a little bit. You're talking get clean. This is kind of like a car wash for a camel caravan. Just run them through. Don't get caught in the middle. You got to get out of there. Well, peace out, you know. He obeys the queen. Oh, buffing up those abs, huh? It's almost like a mm, reel in a desert dune. Uh, and then... He's got some uh, contraband antibiotic team uh, cream uh, smuggled from Munchen, Lee, Mark. And he just empties this whole enormous tube of antibiotic cream in his palm. It makes a big glob. Well, and he smears it, well, delicately over her wounded shoulder. <sighs> Water relief. <laughs> and um, then applies fresh gauze. Everything's smuggled in here. The gauze, it's from Azerbaijan. 
You got to go down to Cash Tent and, and, and Boca Ra to get some gauze. And then applies fresh bandages. Yeah, they ripped those off the uh, commissary up at the American Embassy in Kabul. Yeah, they got some bandages. Well, walking back to this a magnificent two-story Adobe Hotel. Uh, well, Peace Alley figures, look, he's got a queen out and about walking around. Let's get her a pair of shoes. Aladdin slippers from Baluchistan. And they've got those mirrors embedded in, the, in bright colors. Wow. Uh, well, uh, let's start from the shoes upward. Let's just go right up the legs to the... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, uh, silk, black, paton, pantalones, and they flare out in the middle. Silk turban, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quinn, what's your, oh, you like turquoise? Okay, uh, silk turban. And one of those embroidered, exquisite linen, white, pearly white, ivory. Embroidered Afghani shirts that are famous. Every hippie's got one. You may never have seen one. Yeah, those uh, lead slippers, huh? <laughs> I love those uh, curly cues at the toes. And just so they can keep track of her, huh? they got little bells on the end of the curly cued toes. Oh, the Londoner feels so welcomed. And, well, she used to, to be from London. She's got London on her mind. Can't get it out of her mind. So she confides, uh, Ollie, Ollie, where'd you go? Ollie, um, look, here's $700 worth of rupees, Afghanis, with that ugly picture of the goddamn king. Want to tax the batons up the ass, that, that idiot. Uh, safeguard them for me. And my rifle. I mean, this is a Lee Enfield. And I have two bandoliers still of copper case bullets, huh? Yeah, save them for me because I'm going to London. Uh, rob the dentist, in a way, and get out of there. Uh, so on my way back, Okay, I'll have all of this energy and get back to, uh, well, Kabul, down to Jalalabad, and buy a mule. Magnificent mule. I'm buffed out. The mule's got to be buffed out. And I'm going, well, there's only way we go. We, there, it's just back way up the Konar, up and over the Dora Pass. Because I got to wash up before I get down on my knees for the king again. I wash up looking good, huh? Yeah. With my gleaming teeth. Oh, brilliantly reflecting the Himalayan sunlight. Oh. Well, the Zaru Queen, she only keeps about $20 worth of her rupees for her go-to-London stash. You didn't even need money in those days. I mean, maybe you need five bucks to buy a Persian visa at the border, but that's it. And you're like, in a whole bus full of freaks, somebody will help you out. You really didn't need money in the 60s. It's such a revolutionary concept, like now. Average one-bedroom apartment, San Francisco, $1,700 a month? Let me out of there to a place like, uh, well, a place where you can hear birds. You can hear raindrops. Okay. She sends Hussan, okay. 
I'll take three pancakes, uh, hashish pancakes, uh, cookies. Here, go to the bazaar. You know, I got my arm in a sling. <laughs> go to the bazaar and get me Tashkent matchboxes. These are Chitrali's region's finest stick matches. Oh, oh. and, okay. Barefoot. Patter, patter, patter. Oh, the sun comes about. Patter, patter, patter. With 300 individual little matchboxes. All right? And uh, they're all in one giant suitcase size matchbox. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this case is cleverly designed. And a Warhol pop art painter Campbell soup can make a painting of a Tesh Kent matchbox and blow it up to poster size and plaster it across the side of a suitcase, is what I'm talking about. A photograph would have been much easier on my jaws. Zadu asks how she laughs at her new suitcase, a colossal matchbox from Tesh Kent. Oh, yeah. We need to talk again about matchboxes. What's up with all the matches? Well, the Zadu as She's hip that matches, stick matches, are the most valuable item for coochie nomads as they bring their sheep and goats down from the Hindu Kush, 7,000 meter peaks, huh? Yeah, bring them down through Kandahar and all around there, Farah, Farah, yeah, across the road that the Americans built. <laughs> Free mm -hmm. for the king mm -hmm. to keep the Russians ooh, from invading from the north. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you about the Russian road building <laughs> crew shortly. Um, yeah, she's hip. Yeah, the, the, the bigger kids need matches. And, and what they do is they pantomime along the road. They're cute. <laughs> like they're trying to strike a goddamn match so that the traffic knows what, what the hell they're begging for in the first place. Yeah, exaggerated pantomime, yeah. All right, let's go to Herod. Let's have a twist in the plot. We need one. Uh, here comes Ivanov. Ivanov? Yeah, he's a Russian road foreman. He's in charge of building the road from Russia over the Oxiana River. The Oxus River, make a big bridge over there. They never had one before. It used to be, they used to blow up the bellies of water buffalo and make water buffalo flotation rafts to get across the Oxus. Got a bridge, Russian bridge. How wide is it? It's a wide, so wide two tanks can go over it at the same time. <laughs> they made good use of that on New Year's Eve, 19... <laughs> they just took over the whole country. Well, they built the road. Who these people think they are? Give me their country. That didn't work out. Uh, yeah, he breaks Ivanov. Why? Well, gorgeous, young, turbaned, white woman carrying a matchbox the size of a suitcase. Uh, yeah, he's jeeping across the desert of death all the way to Herat. We're talking 550 kilometers. And he's like... Uh, <sighs> bored to death. He's just off and off, you know. Road crew. Russian cement barracks. He's got to go to Herat to party where nobody can see what he's doing. Now. They got a, an alleyway of the slut belly dancers over there, too. 
Well, yeah, uh, sure enough. They often encounter uh, nomad children begging for matches along the roadside. Hmm. And who's got the biggest matchbox on planet Earth? Who's that hip? <laughs> We're talking queen material here. And she knows how to use it generously. <laughs>